Grand Theft Auto 5 remains one of the most popular games of all time, despite coming out 11 years ago and 9 years ago on PC. With the release of the first GTA 6 trailer in December last year, we now know that the next super anticipated game in the series will come out in 2025, on consoles only. So who knows when the PC Master Race will play it? Those of you who are still using a potato PC should have plenty of time to upgrade, but for now, if you can't play GTA 5 properly, then welcome to this video where we will push it to the limits, so forget about high quality character models and good draw distance, because we're gonna make this game run. For the video, I'm gonna use my super low end laptop, which has the dual core Intel Celeron N2840, Intel HD graphics Bay Trail, 4GB of single channel RAM, and a slow hard drive as the boot drive. I'm also using a debloated custom version of Windows 10. But guys, what if I have to inform you that the game initially didn't work at all? It would just get stuck at the black screen and then close shortly after. What I had to do is go to the config file of GTA 5, which is in documents Rockstar Games GTA 5. The settings.xml file is the config file. Right click on it and open it with notepad. Then scroll down until you find the DX version value and change it from true to zero. What we just did is, we lowered the DirectX version that the game uses from 11 to 10, even though the Intel HD graphics page rail do have full DirectX 11.0 support. Weird, huh? Anyway, the game actually works now. I'm using the lowest settings that the game would allow us to use by default, all the advanced options are turned off, and I'm using the resolution of 800 by 600. One thing that we will keep turned on is the vSync, which is set to half by default, and that is very important because if I turn it off, it takes more than 10 minutes for the game to load. But with the vSync set to half, the loading time gets reduced to only around 2 minutes. So this should give you an idea of what is to come. Oh well, let's finally see how the game runs. <laughs> Good lord, you thought it would be better than this, but no. Unlike GTA 4 which was actually kinda playable even with the stock low settings and the same resolution, this one is getting single freaking digit FPS! Yeah, I don't think you can enjoy GTA 5 like this, so let's get to work! We're gonna return to the config file where we've got a lot of tinkering to do. Now, first things first. The shadow quality value controls the quality of the shadows. Setting it to zero, however, disables the shadows entirely. But if you're a low-end gamer, you probably know that. If you scroll down a bit in the config file, you will find the reflection mid blur value. Setting it to false disables most of the reflections and makes the water look interesting. Then there are the LOD controllers, including the LOD scale, pedestrian LOD bias, vehicle LOD bias, and maximum LOD scale down below. LOD stands for level of detail, which is a technique used by video games used to reduce the amount of detail in models by simplifying polygons and textures as you get further away from them to save on computer resources. Did you know that you can set the LOD values to negative ones? The lowest that they can go to is minus 2. If you're setting them to just minus 1 or minus 2, make sure it's always followed by a dot and 6 zeros. If you're setting them to say minus 0.5 or minus 0.7, make sure it's followed by 5 zeros. The LD scale value is a weird one. Setting it to minus 2 seems to liquefy the things around you, but not make them actually disappear or become low poly. Pedestrian LOD bias controls the distance at which the normal high poly models for the characters are rendered. Setting it to minus 2 introduces the legendary block models that all super low end gamers love. However, do keep in mind that doing cutscenes the game still uses the normal models. And if you thought it wouldn't get more interesting than that, then keep watching because we've only scratched the surface. Vehicle LOD bias does the same thing but for the vehicles. Setting it to minus 2 makes all of them low poly, but 
when you drive. The game still renders the high poly model for the vehicle, but without the wheels, making it look like a high-tech hovering car from a 240p 2009 future concept. But by far the most drastic one is maximum LOD scale, which controls the draw distance for pretty much everything. Setting it to minus 2 does this. What the hell is going on with the graphics? I'm in my car right now, but it's invisible. Holy moly. Hey, at least... But hey, at least I'm getting 20 FPS. Also, my character is invisible as well. Wow. I think we've completely murdered GTA 5's graphics. So yeah, just... Don't lower the maximum LOD scale to minus 2 and you'll be fine. If you want a more balanced approach however, here are some suggested presets for the LOD values. Of course, if you want the low poly cars and character models, feel free to lower down the pedestrian and vehicle LOD biases. Here's a side by side comparison between the normal settings with just the shadows disabled and the suggested presets using the low poly cars and pedestrians. If you feel like all that config modifying is too complicated for you, don't worry, I made it all into a mod, which you can download from the link in the video description. Before using it however, you need to check if your GTA 5 has the frame scaling mode option, which is located in the game's advanced graphics settings, then close the game and go back to the mod and choose which preset you want to use. I also included variants with the blocky pedestrians and cars. After that, open one of the two folders depending on whether you have frame scaling mode or not and open one of the text files depending on what resolution you want to play the game at. Then copy all the content inside the chosen text file and open the config file of the game. Now, you need to carefully mark everything inside the config but the stuff below this video line at the bottom. Then simply paste the copied stuff and save the changes. And that's it. Keep in mind that for resolutions below 800x600 without frame scaling mode or below 400x300 with frame scaling mode, the game will run in windowed borderless mode. Because I couldn't get those super low resolutions to work in full screen for some reason. If you don't want to make the game look like full screen, all you need to do is lower your desktop resolution to your chosen resolution. By right clicking on your desktop, then go to display settings, from there, go to Advanced Display Settings, Display Adapter Properties, List of Modes, then choose the lowest option, which should be 640x480. Click OK, then apply. Now, unless you're gonna play at 640x480 without frame scaling or 320x240 with frame scaling, go back to the normal display settings and from there lower the desktop resolution either to 640x400 if you're gonna play at 320x200 with frame scaling or 640x400 without frame scaling or anything else that you chose without frame scaling. With my personal recommendation being not to go any lower than 400x300 as you could make it rather difficult to revert your desktop resolution to your native one after playing. Make sure to do this always before watching the game. But we're not done with the luck fixing yet, you've still got to try out some mods and I have the two perfect choices. The first one is called GTA 5 Extreme Low End Mod 1.2 and the second one is called GTA 5 for super low end PCs, which is actually made by the same guy who made the legendary GTA 4 for extreme low end PCs mod. Remember it from my previous video? Sadly the mod is no longer available, but it has been saved in the web archive, so technically it's still available actually, link in the video description for both mods by the way. In order to mod GTA 5, we need to download the Open IV2. After downloading the two, open it and choose Grand Theft Auto 5 for Windows, obviously. Then choose your GTA 5 folder and press continue. After the loading is complete, hover your mouse to tools and click on ASI Manager. We need to install this plugin so as to not get a corruption error when we try to launch the game with the mods. When you get this create mods folder notification, leave everything as it is and click yes. After that is done, click on edit mode and enable it. Now let's install the GTA 5 for super low PCs mod. First of all, in the tool, go to update, update.rpf. When you get the wet mods folder notification, 
click on copy to mods folder and you will be redirected to the newly copied update.rpf file in the mods folder. Then in the mod, open the update folder and in the tool, go back to the update folder in the mods folder and drag the x64 folder from the mod and drop it to the tool. Now, go back to update.rpf in the tool and go to common data. Go to the same folder in the mod where you will find all the other mod files. Drag and drop all of them with the exception of the game config.xml file because it causes the game to crash during loading and we've successfully installed the first mod. Let's go to the other mod. We're gonna ignore the visual settings which makes the characters blocky. First of all because we already know a more convenient way to make them blocky and second because it only works for the NPCs but not for the protagonists. The time cycle mod because it doesn't work properly in the config files because we already have a bunch of better ones. We will only be removing the glass and for that we need to do the same copying into the mods folder this time with the common.rpf file. Then go to data, go to the same folder in the mod and drag and drop the two files from the mod into the tool and it's all done. If you want to revert the changes from the mods, just delete the mods folder from your games directory. The first thing that you will notice after the modding is that everything looks way more yellow. Another major change is the reduced draw distance, which is mostly noticeable in the built-in benchmark mods during the plane scene. And now with the low end config and the true mods, we're actually getting double digit FPS now. Holy crap! But then we come across another problem. You see, when you initially load into the game, it actually runs fairly smooth and without too much stuttering, albeit at a quite low frame rate. However, as you cruise around the vast Los Santos with your space car, the game starts to demand more and more RAM and because we only have 4 gigs of it, Windows instead increases the swap file usage, which is your virtual memory mostly used to compensate when you're running out of RAM and that swap file is stored on your boot drive. This is especially bad when your boot drive is a mechanical hard drive, as it is in my case. So what happens is the game starts stuttering more and more to the point that it becomes completely unplayable. This problem is better known as memory leak. Unfortunately there isn't a permanent solution to this problem. But I will show you guys what I did to contain the problem to a bare minimum. The method may or may not work for you though, but this worth trying anyway. First, I increased the texture quality to high. I know it sounds crazy given that we have only 4 gigs of RAM and integrated graphics use system RAM as VRAM, so it should have been stuttering even more. But what ended up happening is, initially a bit more stuttering, but after playing for a while, I noticed a lower soap file usage and way less stuttering in the long term. Insane, I know. Of course, if you're having troubles with the high textures, you can always lower them back to the normal ones from the game settings, as my low end configs actually set the texture quality to high. The next thing that I did was I installed this RAM optimization tool called Memory Reduct. I will share the download link for it in the description as well. These are my settings for the tool, feel free to copy them. And press the Queen Memory button every time before watching the game. But we're still not done yet, because after containing the memory leak problem, we come across yet another problem. The thing is, GTA 5's PC port was designed for processors with 4 threads, and the minimum and recommended system requirements do indeed state a quad core CPU with 4 cores and 4 threads. But when your CPU doesn't have 4 threads and it's bottlenecking the GPU, the game becomes unable to load textures, objects or even mission cutscenes in time, especially when driving fast. You will also notice some severe stuttering. The Intel Celeron N2840 that I'm using for this video has 2 cores and 2 threads and is bottlenecking its own freaking integrated graphics. 
Normally, setting the VSync to half should get rid of this problem, but since we can't even reach 30 FPS, we need to take desperate measures. We're gonna be using a program called River Tuner Statistic Server, which you can actually download when you install MSI Afterburner, which is the program that I use to monitor the FPS and other stuff, but you can also download it standalone. Link in the description for the standalone download, by the way. Now, open River Tuner, then click on the big green Add button, then navigate to your GTA 5 folder and select the GTA5.exe file. Make sure it's marked on the space on the left and on the right there's a frame rate limit option which limits the frame rate of certain game or application to whatever you want. Because we're in a pretty dark situation here, I'm gonna have to cap the FPS to 15. I'm so sorry guys, but when you use a CPU that can't compete against code you do from 2006, it is what it is. Another thing that might help a little bit is setting the priority to high. After the game has loaded, press Ctrl plus escape on your keyboard, then right click on your taskbar and open the task manager. Then go to details, find the gta5.exe file, right click on it and set its priority to high, never set it to real time. Keep in mind that you will have to do it every time after loading into the game. Another thing that might help a little bit is disabling the auto scan for music. I don't recommend using custom music by the way because I found out that it reintroduces the texture disappearing problem and even disabling your network could be helpful. <sighs> After almost losing my sanity trying to get GTA 5 to work properly, it's time to see the final gameplay. So. After applying all the tricks that I mentioned in the video just now, well, this is the final result. Also, Michael and the other petitions are looking absolutely amazing, and so do the cars. But uh, look what happens when you enter a car, or any vehicle for that matter. Boop! We've got a high poly model just like what happens in GTA 4, however with a little twist. The wheels are gone. So yeah guys, if you're trying to play GTA 5 with super low settings, well, the cars are gonna be space cars. By the way, even at 15 FPS there are admittedly still some objects not loading at time. Yeah, that's how weak the entry rate 40 is, but hey, you guys wanted playable GTA 5 with somewhat decent FPS. You've got it here. By the way, I really wonder how GTA 6 would run. I can't wait to make a video on GTA 6 in Train Train 7 when it comes out on PC. I'm sure it will run amazingly. After all, GTA 4 the worst PC port ran at 30 FPS. And this also runs, so I'm pretty sure GTA 6 would also run. Speaking of GTA 4, this is actually running worse than the worst PC port ever. Like GTA 5 which is considered by many people to be one of the best PC ports out there, actually runs worse than one of the worst PC ports. That is absolutely insane to think about. But since GTA 5 is a newer game and is much bigger, my guess this was to be expected. You know who I want to visit now? Mr. Crisp's best friend, who is better known as Jack. Hello, Jack. Looking... White and amazing, just like one of the best benchmarks. Oh, crap! Is he okay? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I just killed Jack, guys. With the Celeron at 15 FPS. But hey, at least we can still kill Bob. Where are you, Bob? Where are you? He's not here, guys. Oh well. By the way, now that I've been playing GTA 5 for quite a while, with the mod and these settings and all the tricks, I think it has definitely stabilized itself. It's not stuttering all that much anymore. It's actually kind of stable, you know. Here's a quick look of the wonderful high quality pedestrians. I love these pedestrians, you know. They make you appreciate the little pixels in the game. Yeah, people keep talking about Alan Wake 2, Hellblade 2, Cyberpunk, GTA 6, yeah, forget about that shit. Just play for a little bit with those super low graphics 
and you're gonna learn how to appreciate the little pixels in every game. Mm, I don't know if I should censor these guys. If you guys remember the next gen trailer for GTA 5, you might remember that they also mentioned seamless switching. What if I demonstrate you the Celeron seamless switching? Let's see how fast it is. Whoa! Not gonna lie, that unironically was super fast. Franklin, you gotta sharpen up on your shooting, put some time in at the range if you can. Oh yeah, let's sharpen up our shooting by the way. I've got myself a really nice pew pew pistol for that. Just hear this beauty guys. Isn't that a beautiful sound guys? Well, apparently my shooting sucks. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Damn, I'm hitting him from afar. Hello there, blocky police. I know how to supposed to do anything when they aren't even properly rendered. Get out, you, st you stupid boss. Oh, and we're dead. You know, we haven't tested the lowest potato preset, so let's push it to the limits. And I'm gonna increase the FPS lock from 15 to the age when your girlfriend created her certain blue website account. I'm also 18 by the way. We're back. I honestly don't know how to describe these graphics at this point, because this looks worse than PS1 games. I think this is probably the best that you're gonna get in terms of performance on these specs if you don't want to completely break the game. Wow. Oh, that's a nice graphical liquid and down below is the road. These are some nice liquidy graphics. One thing to note is that the twin cutscenes, the character models will be high poly. Just like in this cutscene right here. So keep that in mind too if you want to use the low poly characters. Let's, let's get inside our nice van. Our nice cyberpunk van. And now we're chasing a highly technological bike in a super high tech van. We are now going quite fast with the seller on one skin, but hey! It's running well! Wait, he was actually hiding there. Fracken actually saw him. Yet I didn't. I think Fracken has some sort of a superpower. That's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it because I almost went crazy modifying the game to make it so much playable and then explaining how I did it. If that's the case, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel as we are steadily going to 1000 subscribers. Keep grinding and I wish you all a very good day.